We're going to delve into Aquagate in just a moment, but first we want to take a look back and recap everything that went down with the Moonanites yesterday in good old Beantown. Yesterday, a terrorist scare shut down the entire city of Boston. Law enforcement personnel found 10 electronic devices throughout the city. Who was responsible for this scare? As it turns out, it was those lovable Moonanites from Adult Swim's Aqua Teen Hunger Force. The ads, which were in place for about two weeks, turned out to be nothing more than magnetic lights. They were placed in 10 major cities across the country as part of an outdoor viral marketing campaign for Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Adult Swim's parent company, Turner Broadcasting, released an apology which stated, quote, We regret that they were mistakenly thought to pose any danger. Did Aqua Teen Hunger Force's viral marketing cross the line? Did Adult Swim intend to cause panic and mass hysteria? Or is America simply afraid of its own shadow? Do you see that? Because he's doing it as hard as he can. It's The Loop. All right, joining us tonight from Los Angeles, TV writer for Variety, Michael Schneider, and from New York, Peter Shankman, CEO of marketing firm The Geek Factory and author of Can We Do That?, a book about outrageous PR stunts. Gentlemen, welcome to The Loop. It has been a very, very interesting day. I'm sure you've been glued to your televisions just as we have around here. I mean, uh, let's start with you, Michael. Uh, and what happened in Boston? I mean, was this, is this guerrilla marketing gone too far? Uh, I, th I think it's guerrilla marketing that obviously worked. I mean, the fact is they put these uh, these uh, pieces of art all over the country, Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York. Why did Boston freak out? Why did none of these other cities freak out? Maybe, maybe they're a little more tense there. Maybe... Uh, uh, I don't know, they're a little more sensitive in Boston or something. Or maybe but, they're uh, lacking 18 to 34-year-old males who kind of got what the art was going for, perhaps. That's, that's perhaps it. I mean, basically, when, when you look at the statements from the governor, from the mayor of Boston, uh, clearly they're not watching Adult Swim. They, they've never heard of a talking milkshake or uh, a meatball uh, determined <laughs> on taking over right. the world. I think it's just funny, but that's just me. Now, Peter, a lot of people didn't think it was funny, and everybody's saying this is clearly this, this new style of marketing is, is hazardous. It's a potential threat. It's dangerous. What do you think? Guerrilla marketing gone too far or just a harmless little art project? You know, first of all, it's not a new uh, form of marketing. War of the Worlds did the same thing 50 years ago. This is, this is nothing new. What this is was, uh, you know, it went too far if they didn't do it right. Brilliant stunt, executed poorly. Did they get the permits to hang these things? If they did, then the problem's really with the city of Boston for freaking out over nothing. And there is, I went to Boston University, there actually is a rule in Boston, don't make the mayor mad. And, and if you, if you, if you, you know, violate that rule, you'll, you'll go to jail. Oh, they so did I more really than violate that rule. Absolutely. Uh, well, of you course. Know, Here's the deal, though. Boston police, they made several arrests. So you say the permits are one thing, but they charged Sean Stevens and Peter Badovsky with disorderly conduct. Uh, okay. And placing a hoax Of course device. they did. They're not going to well, they, grab the CEO of, of they, Turner these are and just bring flunkies, him in. Though. These are just flunkies. I mean, the fact that they're getting arrested and they're going to throw the book at them when all they did was hang these art inst uh, installations up on the wall. There was a guy in San Francisco who found one. He thought it was so cool that he actually stuck it on his wall. You know, they, they, did, they didn't have something up their pants in San Francisco. They, they seemed okay with it. It, it was just Boston. It, it's very bizarre. And uh, shout out to the Department of Homeland Security, by the way, for uh, going on the air and saying, you know what, there's, there's pl we, we haven't found these anywhere else in the country. It's, it's just... <laughs> It's just Boston. When everyone knew, Turner even told us that they were in every city in the country. Right, so. and perhaps had been there for three weeks. But, exactly. But Peter, I, now, I'm it, feeling safe right now. Every, I, don't know I know, I know on, this, on this little debate or this fun discussion that we're having, we all seem to understand it was an art project. Maybe things were blown out of proportion. But any news channel you flick to, any, any radio station that you happen to tune into right now, they're saying this is serious business. Uh, people's commute times were well into the hours. It costed almost a million dollars. It was a huge threat. The, the entire you know, town of Boston, they're up in arms about this. And of course, Turner Broadcasting, they released a statement where they apologized. Now, uh, if you listen to this discussion we're having, it's almost like, well, why would Turner do that? But, but Peter, do you think they should have apologized? Is that right? They, they had to apologize. They're very smart. They apologized. They said, hey, you know what? We screwed up, and it'll cost them a million or a million five in fines, and they'll get $200 million of publicity out of it. But one of the first things that I, I always ask my employees and I always tell my clients when we do these stunts, you know, we flooded Times Square with, a, with, with, with soda. We, we threw 150 CEOs out of airplanes. The first question is, if, if this goes bad, can someone die? 
Okay, and the fact of the matter is, is that is that they needed to ask that, and they needed to explore a little more than they did. The stunts are great, and I'm all for them. Mm -hmm. But you have to ask yourself: They shut down the Mass Ave bridge. What if some 85-year-old guy on one side of the bridge has a heart attack and can't get to the hospital on the other side and dies because he's sitting in gridlock? True, but, but Peter, would your would your company, if you had asked that question about this particular stunt to your employees, do you really think any of them would have gone to that conclusion that placing a harmless piece of magnetic art on a bridge could lead to an 80-year-old man dying because someone's going to shut that bridge down? Would they really have gone there? I'm not. Uh, that's kind I'm of a not stretch. agreeing that it's the right way to yeah. go, but you know what? We live in a world now where everyone screams out, if you see something, say something. I'm not saying it's right, but we have to think like that. You know, a few years ago, ABC actually installed talking urinals. I don't know if you guys remember that. I, I remember think, that. I, I, th I think, I think uh, that impacted me a little bit. I think I got a little more drippage than usual on my pants. But you know what? I didn't sue ABC. <laughs> I didn't call the cops. I didn't call the authorities. You should have sued Dockers because they clearly right. weren't stain resistant at that point. That's not a bad idea. And by the way, I'll be calling my lawyer after this. But anyway. <laughs> now, now, Michael, you tell me, isn't the real mistake that these marketers made uh, the fact that the LEDs weren't in the shape of a McDonald's uh, Golden Arch or Nike swoosh. The Nike had, swoosh. That had right. people recognize the symbol a little bit more uh, uh, rapidly that this would have been a non-issue entirely? Well, I tell you what, if the terrorists ever do try to blow up bridges, I doubt they'll be doing it with cartoon characters flipping you off. I, I don't think they have that kind of sense of humor. I could be wrong, but, but once you saw the images on these sheets, I mean, clearly this was a joke. This was a, you know, it, it, you know when the police saw these things, they should have sure. said, you know what, this was ridiculous. This is a joke. Okay, we get it. You know who's responsible for this? Let's let's just figure this out. Instead, they they called in the authorities. They called in Homeland Security. It it got out of proportion. Now, right, who's I to blame for I it? I want to end this with Peter here because uh, you know you, your company does these kind of campaigns all the time. This could potentially mean a million dollars, a million plus in fines for Turner. You know, when when a thirty second spot deal. for the Super Bowl goes for billions, uh, you know, is this a big deal to them, really? Not in the slightest. What this will do is, you know, qu quietly they'll, they'll come out in public and they'll say, you know what, we screwed up and we're sorry and we're paying for the cost of the bomb threat, the, you know, the bomb squad. And then they're going to go back and they're going to close the doors and make sure all the cameras are going off and go, hey guys, it's sweeps week, $50 million in advertising, <laughs> we rule. All right. I want to thank our guests, Michael and Peter, for joining us today. Uh, you know, thanks for keeping us in the loop. Ye yesterday's events, they showed that America is still very serious about the threat of terrorism and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. But what is incredibly wrong is the media's handling of this non-situation. I mean, can we please stop perpetuating this culture of fear? I mean, the words terror hoax device and prank terrorism threat, they're still being thrown around despite the fact that this incident was completely debunked while other news outlets were still claiming it was developing. I mean, attack of the show, we certainly don't have the resources that Fox News or Turner-owned CNN does. Yet as the devices were still being removed live, our staff performed a couple Google searches, and we were able to see this story for what it was, a gigantic misunderstanding. Everybody just calm down, take a deep breath, relax for one second, maybe watch some cartoons. Because you know, when a few LEDs overshadow actual bombings in Iraq, it's clearly time to change the channel. Attack of the Show, weeknights at seven, only on G4.